Jordan Peterson and Dennis Prager, along with some other guests, were on a panel, and the subject of pornography in marriage came up. And I was shocked at what Dennis Prager and Jordan Peterson had to say on the subject. Let's check it out. I am less interested in the interior person, morally speaking, than you are. Largely, I do believe, because I come from a behaviorist, law-based religion. We care how you act. That's why we don't have a claim that if you look at another woman with lust, it's as if you've committed adultery with her. Obviously, Christianity and Judaism are not identical religions, uh, and, and we have no equivalent that if you look upon another woman with lust, it's as if you have committed adultery with your heart. There's only one way to commit adultery in Judaism, and it's with a different organ. And I'm not being cute. I'm, I'm being very realistic. Uh, looking with lust is not a sin in Judaism. Now, Dennis Prager is not a Christian. He is Jewish and follows Judaism, so I don't expect him to hold to Christian beliefs. Now, obviously, in Christianity, it's not simply about your actions. It's about your heart. In Matthew 5, 27, Jesus said this, You have heard it said, You shall not commit adultery, but I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. See, the desire for sexual intimacy is a healthy, God-given desire, but lust is a perversion of that desire. Lust perverts our God-given sex drive. See, God designed us to be sexual beings with the ability to enjoy and express our sexuality within the covenant of marriage. And lust is a perversion of that desire. Lust seeks to take sexuality outside of the boundaries provided by God. The Greek word for lust is epithemeo, which means over-desire. So lust isn't our normal and natural desire for sex. It's an over-desire. Lust is when we have an inflamed sexual desire that causes us to step outside the boundaries for sexuality. So what is God's boundary for sexuality? God's design for sexuality is one man and one woman in the covenant of marriage. Anything outside of that boundary is considered sexual immorality. Ephesians 5, 3 says this, But sexual immorality in all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you, as is proper among the saints. Now the phrase sexual immorality is the Greek word porneia. It refers to any and all forms of sexual activity outside of the covenant of marriage between a man in a woman, right? That's casual sex, prostitution, premarital sex, cohabitation, adultery, homosexuality, oral sex, and pornography. It all falls under the category of sexual immorality. Let's get back to the video. Looking with lust is not a sin in Judaism. What's the stance on porno what's the stance on pornography? So pornography when I'm asked this question, you, just to you, put you on the spot, you the did way. indeed. Uh, okay, so my my answer when it's raised on my radio show, I have a male female hour, and I'm very open about sexual subjects. I always ask if a wife calls me and says my husband looks at pornography. I, I, I found on his computer. I have one question: How is your in life of intimacy with your husband? Is it good? In other words, is the pornography in lieu of you or in addition to you? Mm -hmm. uh, and I know this is not a religious answer, mm -hmm. and I, I'm not even giving a religious answer. I'm giving mm -hmm. what I think is a moral and realistic answer. Men want variety. And uh, if adultery is a substitute for, if pornography is a substitute for one's wife, it's awful. If it's a substitute for adultery, it's not awful. Dennis argues that porn isn't a bad thing if it's done in order to stop a man from committing adultery. Now, my first problem with this is that it makes it seem like those are your only two options, right? Pornography or adultery. But there is a third option. It's called self-control. Now let's see what Jordan Peterson says about this. Clinical rule of thumb that's akin to that, I would say, if you're trying to decide clinically whether someone's partaking in a habit 
say, use of alcohol has reached the threshold of clinical significance, one of the things you do is ask the, the person you're assessing, you know, is it interfering with your employment? Has it got you in trouble with the law? Is your family complaining? Does it stop you from doing other things that you should be doing? And so the judgment isn't the use of the forbidden substance itself. It's, it is in some sense consequentialist. And I'm not saying that that's an absolute, but it is a, it is a hallmark right. of clinical judgment. Jordan Peterson talks about how a habit is either good or bad based on how it impacts a person's life. But just because something isn't interfering with your employment and it hasn't gotten you in trouble with the law and your family isn't complaining, that doesn't mean it's okay. You know, one of the myths about porn is that we think that because it's done in private, it doesn't impact anyone else. For starters, pornography is filmed with prostitution. Prostitution is paying for sex. Pornography is two people being paid to have sex. It's filmed prostitution. And becoming a prostitute is no one's childhood dream. In fact, 75% of the models and actors who are involved in uh, the modeling or the films were sexually abused as children. So whenever you watch pornography, you are taking advantage of the abuse they suffered as a child. You are voting yes to the sexual abuse they experience. By watching pornography, you are creating a demand for more and you are contributing to the destruction of the people involved. Do you know why child pornography is the fastest growing branch of pornography? Because there is a demand for it. Every time you click on an image, you are creating a demand for more and you're bringing more people into the bondage of the sex industry. Pornography pollutes one's sexuality and denigrates people into objects for personal gratification rather than God's creation deserving of honor and value. So you need to understand that the porn industry and sex slavery go hand in hand. The same demonic spirits that are at work in the porn industry are at work in the human trafficking industry. The two work together and support each other. You know, of domestic minor trafficking victims who have been forced into porn production, the average age they began being filmed was 12.8 years old. Not only does porn hurt and destroy others, but it is guaranteed to destroy your sex life as well. You think that pornography is just something between you and your computer screen that is harmless. It is anything but harmless. The impact of porn and the way it shapes your future in some very disturbing ways. Right? Pornography is a world where you can have sex with the most gorgeous and handsome people in the world. Porn stars are never in a bad mood. They never have a bad hair day. Their bodies are always perfect, and they are ready anytime you want. See, that is the world of porn. And see, people think, well, I'll just watch pornography and masturbate to curb my sexual appetite until I get married. And then when I get married, I won't need it anymore. But when you've been living in the world of porn for so long, it becomes difficult to connect with reality. You have been living in a private fantasy world with the hottest, most beautiful, handsome men and women in the world. And then you enter into the real world on your wedding night and it doesn't end with and they live happily ever after because your spouse can never measure up to the porn stars that you've been having sex with for all these years. A 2014 study found that uh, compulsive pornography users had greater impairments of sexual arousal and erectile difficulties in intimate relationships, but not with sexually explicit materials. So you aren't marrying a porn star. You are marrying a real person with feelings, moods, and even fat cells. See, porn gives us an inaccurate view of sex. Sex in the real world is work. It starts, you know, with taking out the garbage and changing diapers. It's loving, caring, connecting. It requires work. But porn is easy. Sex in marriage is work. And this is why so many people retreat back into the fantasy world of porn even after marriage because reality doesn't measure up to your fantasy world. And you soon find yourself alone in a room by yourself making love to a person who doesn't exist. 
And that is not just some scenario I made up. This is the story of millions of people. Porn destroys their ability to have a normal sexual relationship with their spouse because reality cannot compete with their fantasy. There is no benefit to pornography. It enslaves those in the industry and those who watch it. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor, smash that like button, share this video with a friend, and let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to this channel. Statistics show that 80% of the people who watch this channel are subscribers. So hit that subscribe button and click on the bell so that you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching. And remember, if it's not good, God's not done.